Hello there and happy Good Friday to you. This is Network Africa. Coming up on the program, 22 senior commanders touched down in Juba, a sign that peace has most likely come to the people of South Sudan. Then the terrible fuel queues worsen across Nigeria. Our energy correspondent joins us with the latest. And later we look at ways to use energy efficiently with a special wood stove that's made to cater for everyday, everyday Nigerians. Welcome to Network Africa on Channel Television with me, Cynthia Are. Christians globally are celebrating Good Friday, a religious holiday commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary. The holiday is observed during Holy Week on the Friday preceding Easter Sunday and may coincide with the Jewish observance of Passover. It's also known as Holy Friday, Great Friday, Black Friday, or Easter Friday, though the last term properly refers to the Friday in Easter week. Good Friday is a widely instituted legal holiday in many national governments around the world, including Nigeria. Well, we hope you're doing your best to enjoy this public holiday despite the fuel queues and the electricity situation in Nigeria. We'll get to that in a moment with our energy correspondent, Tulu Phillips. But for now, let's look at some of the progress which the world's newest country is making. 22 senior commanders of the SPLAM, who form part of the opposition, have arrived in Juba. The SPLMIO spokesperson view the gesture as a sign that peace has come to the people of South Sudan. 22 senior commanders of the Sudan People Liberation Army in opposition board a United Nations flight from Paga to Juba. On their arrival, they are received by the Sudan People Liberation Movement in opposition, Tabandengai, and the government spokesperson, Michael Makui. Maku describes the arrival of the commanders as a key step in the implementation of the peace agreement to resolve the conflict in South Sudan. We are happy to receive them today. This marks actually the beginning of the real implementation of the agreement. And with this implementation, with the coming of the police, definitely the joint integrated police will be organized and set up to take over the responsibility of the security of Juba town and the other three towns of South Sudan. Taban Dengai, chief negotiator, says that the first batch of their forces is expected in Juba to pave way for peace in South Sudan. The arrival of these officers and the starting of arrival of forces as of tomorrow, next tomorrow, this means the first vice president is coming to Juba any, any time as of now. Also speaking at the airport soon after the arrival is the SPLMIO spokesperson, William Ezekiel who says that their arrival is a positive move. It is a sign that peace has come to the people of South Sudan. And we are happy, and we are happy on the people of South Sudan are now happy. This is a good news. Uh, we thank God, and we thank uh, signatories to the agreement. Uh, we thank Troika, we thank IGAD, and so on and so forth. A peace agreement signed in August 2015 paved way for various aspects of the implementation of the peace process. Among them, the arrival of all members of the SPLMIO and the formation of a transitional government of national unity. More members from the opposition are expected in the next few days. Well, one site that's truly difficult to miss these days across Nigeria, specifically in Lagos, are the endless fuel or petrol queues. The queues have literally doubled this week, showing that things have actually gone from bad to worse. Now, based on this unfortunate situation, our energy correspondent, Olu Phillips, joins us for the latest on the situation. Olu, thank you very much for your time. We had you, you. Yes, we, we had you with us on the show earlier this week, and since that time up until now, things have actually gotten worse. What's going on? 
Well, let me first of all say happy Good Friday to you. Happy Good you, you Friday. Can actually, you can be happy. We can be happy irrespective of what's happening. But um, let's say the way it is. I mean, nothing has changed. And um, it's scary that nothing has changed. What's, what's actually scary is it seems something has changed. In, basically, by that, I mean that things have gotten worse. Well, in terms of what should happen to ameliorate the situation, I've not seen any... Um, very strong um, commitment or very strong direction or any action that can change and help improve the situation. Because truth, like I always say, I mean, if, you, if the supplies increase, people are not going to store petroleum products in their stomach. They can only consume as much as they can consume. And so um, there, was a, there was a presidential meeting that held sometime this week with stakeholders, especially from the union guys and the other guys. What we don't, what we don't have coming out from that meeting is specific action plan, mm -hmm. taking advantage of low hanging fruits if we have any trees grown. Anyways, if we have any trees grown, let alone having fruits, then a low hanging fruit, then we can begin to tap them. So what was the outcome of the meeting? Well. What we have from the meeting is mere rhetorics, for, as far as I'm concerned, because we do not have any action. We, we didn't. We didn't hear any action plan of what will happen, or what the government intends to do to end this. We are only told this can end over a period of time, which is from when to when. In the next two months, as it were. So, um, I don't know what scheme that has been put in place, but we need to see a schematized um, outlay that allows you to look at it and say, okay. I can be patient this long because the parameter I can see can't get any shorter. But Nigerians are not aware of this. We don't know exactly what government intends to do. We only do know that the government, through the State Petroleum Corporation, are in charge of importing petroleum products to the tune of about 78 80%. That's all we know, that they bring in petroleum, finished petroleum products and distribute through the marketers and through the depots across the country. Outside that, we don't know any other things. So, so what are we supposed to do for the next two months? I we don't know where the next supply is coming from. It's sad that people have to go through this. Um, and it's also sad that Nigerians did not necessarily contribute to the problem we're facing. We have a challenge, no doubt. It's a protracted one, no doubt. It's long coming, no doubt. But we, we, we need a lot of quick, fix, quick fixes right now. And um, my quick suggestion would be that Government need to help find forex for more people to bring in this product so that we can at least cushion the effects of this hardship. I do not know how long people can hold on to. As far as going to the petrol station, you don't just go there. As far as queuing at the petrol stations endlessly, today is supposed to be a holiday, but mm -hmm. people have woken up as early as 4 or 5 o'clock and are spending their uh, um, Easter breaks at the fuel station. For a country that has all the potentials, for a country that produces, for a country that is the sixth largest hydrocarbon producers, what is the story we are talking about here? That we cannot ramp up finished products? But, well, before we get to the, um, the, the solution or suggestion of Forex, like you said, what do we do? I mean, I don't know if you know where your next supply of, of fuel is coming from, but I don't, and most people do not. So what do we do in the meantime, especially with the two months? Incidentally, Nigerians will be at the receiving end. Nigerians will be at the brunt. There's nothing you can do. Okay, the job you need to do or you have is to always go and queue for petrol. Is that the kind of job you want to do? Is that what you want to do? But that's just what it is right now. We have to keep queuing for petrol to, to run our cars, to run our generators. And uh, we don't want to keep repeating these things because they don't make us proud. And um, we need to see very, we need to hear very strong statements coming from the government quarters. Very strong statements, statements that will be followed with actions. We need to hear those strong statements. I, I for one, and people who are watching, like I said earlier, didn't hear any very strong statement coming from that meeting that ended sometime this week with the president and the minister of state for petroleum and um, stakeholders. We need very strong statements. Uh, we've, they talked about the refineries. They talked about um, importation. But we are not very clear if, for instance, we are bringing in 20,000 metric tons of uh, finished product and they're coming in five vessels, 
Are we seeing a situation where those vessels will increase to 20, 25? Are we seeing what kind of arrangements do we have? What has happened with the swap deals that was um, um, jettisoned for another, uh, what's it called, for another policy of direct sales, direct purchase? We thought when that mm. policy comes in that would, it, actions will be expedited on uh, swapping our 445 or whatever that is the, the remaining from what the, 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 the yeah. refineries can produce well, and well, get it swapped for finished products. Well, what, I, what I hope for is that what, what you said will come to pass, um, um, the strong statements and actions. Follow with follow actions. Suit. Follow Thank with you. actions. Thank we you are tired of much. hearing promises and that yes. we, we should, I mean, no, 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 no. Thank you very much. Our energy correspondent, Olu Phillips with us in studio still to come on network africa we look at ways to use energy efficiently with a special wood stove that's made to cater for everyday nigerians